Uh, why don't we move on to our next topic here? Yeah. Which GPU do we want to talk about? I don't know. Which one do you want to like talk that's about? I want to talk about the Arc, to be completely okay, honest. Okay, let's talk about the Arc. Which I one? The this... Covenant? Yeah. Survival? No. Ark of the Covenant. Okay, Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Covenant. Let's yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. Indy should have opened it. <laughs> <laughs> he was pure of heart enough that he would have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, no, sorry. Because taking artifacts from elsewhere and bringing them back to your home country is very pure of heart. Yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> Okay, Indy's less of a modern hero, more of a, yeah, more heroic. Yeah, a little bit. With a little different, bit. different, yeah. in a different time. Anyways, and, Intel Arc A770 and A750 reviewed and streamed. I thought that was cool. That was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah I thought that was a good idea too. That was Alex's idea. Good. Um, after years of exciting announcements and then months of radio silence, Intel has finally released their Arc GPUs. Their pricing, the A750 8GB is $289, the A770 8GB is $329, and the same card, but in the 16GB variant, is $349. But, there's complications. Yeah. Um, Horrific driver problems. Rebar I mean, required. If it's not DX12 or Vulcan, oh boy, okay. you might not even want to play it. We got some games that were not DX12 or Vulcan that they gamed. You know, oh. they were gaming. Okay. Oh yeah, they were gaming on, I didn't on watch the stream. The whole stream so. Okay. Yeah. I'm. Most things were pretty playable, and the problems that we had on older or lighter games. Are they seriously sold out. Running they? older API. Oh, of course they are. Uh, running older APIs, the problems that we had were not necessarily ones that every casual user would experience. Like Alex, for example, was finding the wild FPS, like frame time swings in Rocket League, unplayable. I, a Rocket League moron... I was just going to say, you don't play, and he probably does, right? He plays hard. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I see the frame times are all over the place. And it's definitely less smooth than my RTX 3060 over here beside you. Sure. But this would not affect my ability to play this game. You know what I mean? But it could be the same thing in Beat Saber, okay? You give me those kinds of frame time variants, I'm going to be like, this is unplayable! Wow, I'm going like, hurling all over the place. Right? Yeah. You know, so it depends, on, it depends on your skill level. So if you're a casual gamer, I would say that many games were quite playable, Many were problematic. I think this is this is a sidebar thing, but yeah. if you remember correctly, the first time in many years that I actually felt my computer performance not being where I wanted it to be was with Beat Saber because I started getting into difficulties where it was too fast and I, I was started to lag. Yes, I was just like, it's well, noticeable. This, this sucks. Yeah, at that at those speeds, uh, you know, nine milliseconds of stutter or whatever. And when you're in VR, like it's. Ooh, very off-putting. It's not like there's certain games like, you know, if you can't afford the upgrade, you can fight through it. It's fine. Beat Saber, like, no, you put that game down, you do something else. Um, but anyways, back on topic. So this raises a lot of questions. With all the experience that Intel has making GPUs, and they do. Yeah. Right? They, they, they've been doing onboard yeah. GPUs for like over 10 years now, right? On their on their CPUs. And 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 they've even gotten a lot better. Oh yeah. They they've made major pushes, you know, whether it's like Iris or like early XE onboard or you know whatever else. Like, but they've made major pushes in improving these from actually man, no. Intel's been doing onboard graphics since before that. They used to have their onboard chipset graphics too. Oh uh -huh, yeah. Intel's been doing onboard yeah. graphics flipping forever. So it raises the question if they've made their way all the way through DirectX 10, 9, 8, 7, 10, oh, so far back, how can they suck at it so much? The teams are disconnected or something? No. I don't know. Oh. It's more interesting than that. Oh. With onboard graphics, one of the main tasks of the software uh -huh. team is to take as much GP lo GPU load away as possible and put it onto the CPU. Anything they can, pull it off that weak sauce GPU, put that on the CPU, put it on those general purpose processing cores. With a dedicated graphics card, 
Well, it's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah. You, you want to do as you little can. as possible on the CPU. I mean, that's one of the big innovations recently is allowing the GPU to talk directly to system memory even. Right? Because that's what we want. You don't want it to go through that processing unit. Why are we adding bottlenecks? Yeah. CPUs, and, and that's another thing. CPUs used to be like very fast compared to GPUs. Now, <laughs> it's not really necessarily the case. We're going to put a whole computer in your computer. <laughs> Hey, thanks, Mumbles Malarkey. Um, so that's a big challenge. It is also my understanding that, hey, this is a first-gen product, right? Like, there, it, it's very clear from the power consumption, the die size, um, the just like the elaborate design of the card itself even like that's an, you guys got to understand that's an expensive cooler on intel's arc gpus there's a lot of plastic molding that went into it, it, it it's it's premium right um that's not the kind of cooler you design for a 289 eighty nine dollar yeah. graphics card yeah. so there's a lot of indicators that intel intended for this product the width of the memory bus for example 256 bit there's a lot of indicators that intel intended for this to be a much higher end product something that would compete more with an rtx 3070 but what it seems to me is that even with the hard work that the software team is undoubtedly doing, there could be some just plain architectural stumbles that were made. And at some point, Intel had to make the call. Do we respin this again to the point where it's going to launch at the same time as the next generation Battle Mage, which cannot be delayed, right? So if you guys watched our video touring the Intel Fab, which I think you probably did, yeah. right? You see that there are actually multiple generations of product, products in flight, right? At the same time. So if you delay one of them, you can actually end up stomping right on top of its launch with a next generation, way better, way more cost-effective product. We actually saw this happen with Broadwell. Do you remember Broadwell? The 5775C was the flagship Broadwell desktop CPU. Broadwell was, I believe, a, a moderate success in mobile. But on desktop, the 5775C launched, and then almost immediately, yeah. the 6700K yeah. Skylake architecture came out and replaced it. So here, here we go. 5775C came out June 2nd, 2015. Okay, or at least that's when the uh, article went up on Anantech. And August 5th, 2015. Uh, oh, wait. May 5th, 2020? Oh, no, no, yeah. August 5th, 2015, Skylake launched. So, like, K. It had two months of being the hotness before immediately there was a better product. So, at some point... The ARC team had to look at it and go, well, we're either going to launch Alchemist or we're not. <laughs> and, you know, you can imagine how these things work, right? Because the software team is working before there's final hardware. The hardware team is working on the hardware before there's final software. It's, it's a hope and a prayer that any of this stuff works at all, right? <laughs> so they might have gotten back the silicon, thought, we can fix this in software. And I'm speculating right now. We can fix this in software. Then they get to a point in the software where they're like, holy crap, we need to fix this in hardware. Rinse and repeat, right? Well, you can only go through that cycle so many times before you, reach, before you run out of window for where you're actually going to be able to deliver a product. So I, th I think it is entirely conceivable that Intel fully understands that this is going to be a bit of a limited product and hopefully they can take those those learning outcomes and apply them to battle mage apply them to celestial which are their upcoming generations of products and and this is not going to be something where um management goes well that wasn't successful let's just kill it i i, I sincerely hope and i sincerely doubt yeah, I, I, I'm on board as well. I, I doubt that that is that's what's going to happen. In spite of all the, I think the rumors of gaming Intel gaming GPUs death have been greatly exaggerated. If these Arc GPUs did not have the, you know, DX12 and Vulcan or Bust issues, how well do you think they would have done? A lot better. Yeah, but like, is this something you strongly recommend at that price point? It's tough. You know? If it uh, again. If it doesn't have that problem. Here's something we ran into during the stream. 
we noticed, and I don't know for sure that this is an ARC issue. Uh, this could have been an issue with our displays or capture cards. So don't don't take take this for what it is. It's it's uh, it's an observation. We noticed that when we were cloning our display, okay, between our capture card and the monitor that I was gaming on, we actually had some issues with the NVIDIA card around this too, where it was running at 120 hertz and the mouse was smooth, but dragging windows was horrible. Uh -huh. I don't know. We I, I forget how we ended up solving it, but we did we did ultimately solve it. It was really dumb. Okay. Uh, but on the Intel side, we were getting uh, the limited uh, limited uh, gamma value thing. So we were in limited mode, which is for TVs of so like sixteen to two thirty five or whatever it is, instead of full range, which is zero to two fifty five, which was causing the stream to look fine. Because I think that device was expecting okay. a limited input, yeah. and then the monitor looked like crushed and clipped because it was expecting a full range input, and there wasn't an obvious way in Intel's dashboard to fix that. Hmm. So just because the performance is okay, and just because we value competition in the marketplace, doesn't necessarily mean that I can unequivocally say, "Go for it! It's going to be a great experience. You're going to love it." Right, because if you enjoy messing around with things more than I can wholeheartedly games, recommend it. Yeah, it it looks honestly, it sounds very interesting. Just to like that, that's why I was happy that you guys did that stream. I haven't. It's I mean, it's long. I haven't watched the whole thing. It's got timestamps um, now, so you can just check specific games I, if I you're into that. Saw that comment, uh, yeah. but I was happy that you guys did that because it's just so interesting. Yeah. Like, it's very cool for that fact, but if you want something that's, like, rock-solid, reliable, and you can play games all the time, yeah. yeah. NVIDIA yeah. and AMD have a little more experience. I just hope enough people buy them that yes. the whole project doesn't get canned. Yeah, because I really want to see Battle Mage. I really want to see beyond that. Intel has some serious... I, I think Intel, to be clear, haven't seen Radeon 7000 yet. But I think from what I know about their organize, organizational structures, I think Intel is a much more credible competitor to NVIDIA when it comes to machine learning. Oh, okay. okay. Compared to AMD. Yeah, I was going to say with the, with the whole, um, I can't think of the name for it right now, but like stitched together cores. Oh, 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 oh my goodness. Why is this escaping me as well? Yeah. Now you've thrown me off. But chiplets. With that, chiplet yeah, design. with chiplets. There we go. <laughs> well, uh, I am pretty... <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I didn't know you were going with machine learning. But before you were going with machine learning, I yep. was thinking, mm, the chiplets might change everything yep. up. But the um, thing is that so much of gaming performance for us to continue to improve from here, I don't necessarily think Jensen's correct that Moore's Law is dead, but as we talked about earlier certainly slowed down and i think a lot of the improvements harder. to gaming performance going forward are going to be driven by machine learning and not just not just gaming for gamers but also gaming for developers right i mean in a world where you can just kind of uh you know make a brown box and then just tell your ai texture generator yeah it's wood <sighs> right like that's a game changer oh yeah <laughs> right uh <laughs> Took me a second. Um, yeah, it totally is, though, actually. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Core Dog asks, who from LTT is going to buy an Intel Arc? If, I mean, is this one of those things where I should just, like, put my money where my mouth is, go to Memory Express, buy an Arc, put it on my mantle, and just be like, okay, I walked the walk. I technically bought one. I just put it on a shelf. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> if I, I think I've said it before, and I would still say it now. If I was still buying hardware, I would seriously consider it. Because it's just so interesting. And I would find playing different games and testing them and stuff, I would find that interesting. But that's not going to be for most people, for sure. Um, and and there are the, you, you brought up last oh, time. No. You brought up the social issues, like if you can't play some game with your friends, Yeah, it sucks. okay, so are you ready? Yeah. We've been challenged. The 30-day ARC challenge? 30-day ARC challenge. I'm down. Are you going to actually do it this time, though? I Mr. did it! Mr. I'm going to install Linux it. on my computer and then play VR games for the entire duration of the That's challenge? That's not fair. I, I played VR games a handful of times. <laughs> and you, just, okay, and you just avoided PC gaming the whole time, though. That's a valid result. <laughs> That's a valid outcome. That's fair enough. 
It's a valid outcome. <laughs> it was too much work to gain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was. It actually was. <laughs> to be clear, yeah. State of Linux gaming changed a lot since then, even. Like, man, Steam Deck is kind of wild. We did know that was likely to happen, Yes, to be fair. But I I'm glad we tried it before it got easy mode. I'm glad to have had yes. the experience. Yeah. Trial yeah. by fire, man. I'm forged. LTT Labs Jake uh, says I'll be buying one for my wife. Wow. What a, you're going to throw, throw under that I mean, bus? Yeah, wife for now. <laughs> why do you hate your wife? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully she likes di diagnosing why games are hard to play. Um, <laughs> or or hopefully you know that the game in then in brackets S that she plays um, works well on it, I guess. Okay. Loser shaves their beard. That's... <laughs> wow. I saw that. I didn't want to say it because I really don't want to do that. Well, how do you lose, though? You game on anything other than an Arc GPU. Okay, then I think I'll be fine. Okay, I could I could do it for a month. I could do it for a month. Okay. I've done it before. I've I've put friendships on pause for a month. Okay, sure. Why All not? Right. Arc challenge. Yeah. Uh, not we this go. weekend. We're gonna. Ha I don't know if we have enough arcs, <laughs> but uh, we'll we'll set a start date and uh, yeah, yeah. We'll do we'll do the arc challenge. Yeah. Okay. All right. VR sure. included. Uh, Crap. Um, it's a game. All right. All right. My deal, uh, my deal for that though, is that I don't want to be the one that has to change the GPUs in my computers and put them back. I'll do my personal rig. I don't want to do like the VR machine or whatever. Oh, okay. Just because it's like a lot of work and that's not actual content creation. So uh, Dan, can you swap my <laughs> GPUs for ARCs, please? Sure. Okay. You only you. have like one computer, right? Nothing complicated? Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. No, okay. In all seriousness, though, I'm not trying to just be a diva. When we do videos at my house that actually disrupt my personal setup yeah, and my personal it sucks, life, I'm sure. Yeah. It, and, and we do it often. People often leave my place in a state where uh, if I had done it at work, there's two or three hours of putting things back to the way they were that is typically handled by the writer or by logistics or whatever else that, that like shouldn't actually be a CEO task that just gets dumped on me when we do things at my house. Like it's actually kind of unfair. So that's my, that's my only requirement. I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to lose. And ne neither we're both way too stubborn. So it like, doesn't really matter what the stakes are. Neither of yeah. us are going to give up before 30 days. Yeah. <laughs> I would never give it up or let it down. 